So hunting, is it ethical or not? We are going to talk about that today and go into so much more detail on the top five arguments that I have heard in defense of hunting. Hey friends, Serena here, and for those of you that are new, I have been vegan since birth, and on this channel I talk about the what, whys, and hows of veganism and answer all of your questions. So today I want to dive into the topic of hunting and whether or not it is ethical for animal lovers, or really anyone, to hunt. But in particular, if you have wondered or heard about hunting and, and people that will come out, especially some of the most recent ex-vegans, you know, people like John Venus went from being a vegan to a hunter. And so what I want to do today basically is take the top five arguments in defense of hunting and deconstruct them, give you my response, and really break them down with some ethics, morality, and science, and evidence as well. So let's get into it. All right, so the first defense of hunting is that we've been doing it for hundreds, if not thousands of years, and it is natural and completely normal. My thought is, okay, but what does this matter? And I've talked about this in previous videos, such as my What is Speciesism and my uh, Ethics of Meat video, where I actually go into the natural argument a little bit. But basically, what does natural have to do with ethics and morality here today? Most of us, I do not think, are living naturally when we are living in homes and have air conditioning and drive cars and go to the store to buy food. I'm gonna guess 99% of those people that are hunters are still going to the grocery store and buying food that they haven't hunted themselves, whether it be grains and vegetables that they're also eating or whether it is actually other meat that they did not hunt themselves. So basically, natural is a really poor argument to ethically and morally justify something today. Because if we use that logic, of course, rape, murder, infanticide, and many other things have been natural throughout human history and in human culture for millennia. And yet we don't use that as a justification to continue doing those practices today. So why is it any different for hurting and killing animals? Number two, hunting is more ethical than factory farming because you're taking free living wild animals that never suffered, were never in a cage, never confined or bred for this purpose, and they have one bad day, maybe even one bad hour or a few bad minutes. And this is the same basic argument in favor of the supposed humane slaughter. So let's really jump into this one here. First of all, even if that is true, which I will concede that yes, hunting is less problematic, less horrible than factory farming, but something being less bad doesn't actually make it good. And that's the case with hunting. So yes, it's true that animals aren't raised in cages and they do get to live their life as a free living wild animal the majority of the time. But taking an animal's life against their will when they want to live just like we do is still immoral, unethical, and fundamentally unnecessary. And so if our goal as people sitting here right now is to live the most ethical life that we possibly can, cause the least harm to others, then not intentionally killing an animal for whatever reason has got to be part of that. And there's no way to say that, well, they're killed quickly or they're killed you know, at the end of their life. Like, Deer can live for many, many years, and, and the average age of deer being killed in hunting a lot is like three and a half years old. So that's a fraction of the natural lifespan that they would live without human hunters interfering. Over 15 million hunting licenses are sold annually. These numbers come from 2018, but they don't tend to fluctuate that much on a yearly basis. And of that, right, white-tailed deer are one of the most common animals to be hunted and over 6 million white-tailed deer are annually killed in hunting, and upwards of 15 million ducks and geese together are killed every year in the United States. That's a lot of animals being killed. And while the hunting argument is that they are being killed instantaneously, quickly, and painlessly, and barely even know it, and it's the most humane method of killing an animal, the reality is actually quite different. So there are a number of different types of hunting around the world. In the US, the two main types, the two primary types are bow hunting 
and rifle hunting. In the UK, we also have dog and hound hunting, um, like with foxes, and I'm sure there are many other methods of hunting, but these are the two primary ones that get a lot of attention. Bow hunting is increasingly popular in the United States, making up now about a quarter of all deer hunting in the US. And I will say, as I was diving into this issue and really looking for studies and statistics on this, it was incredibly hard to find any published studies, especially in the last 20 years on this topic, and even more that were unbiased and not explicitly promoting or talking about hunting as being beneficial. But of the few that I did find, it appears that bow hunting has a pretty high injury and like basically wounding and crippling rate where an animal is actually shot or hit with an arrow, but it doesn't kill them outright and they either are wounded and the, the hunter has to come track them down or they're wounded and managed to get away completely and the hunter never really knows what happens to them. And so for bow hunting, the estimates are pretty wide and again, not many studies, but they range from about 18% up to a 28% wounding rate. That's indicating that 28% of the time that a hunter shoots a deer with some sort of bow, they are not killing the animal instantaneously and the animal is likely suffering in agony and pain, often never being killed by the farmer within a few minutes or a few hours. They often go off for days before they die or get a disease or an infected wound and suffer and, and I think it's really hard for anyone to argue that that is not really terrible. Hunters themselves know that the wounding and crippling rate is really bad. And I actually saw a lot of quotes suggesting that we, the reason we don't know what hunting, wounding, and crippling rates actually are is because hunters are encouraged not to report them, not to study them, not to document them, so that no one outside the field really knows how many animals aren't being killed outright because hunters don't feel good about that because of course they're attempting to be these ethical animal lovers, supposedly. I actually myself have experience with a bow hunter because I grew up where my parents lived was a little bit out in the country and we had 20 acres of woods and there were definitely a lot of hunters around us in the area. And I remember one time a guy in hunting gear basically comes out of the woods behind our house on our property and knocks on our door and is like, have you seen an injured deer around here? And this hunter is on our property saying, I shot a deer and they got away and I haven't found them. You know, I think they had an arrow sticking out. And it was really, really atrocious. And I felt so heartbroken that there was potentially an animal on our land suffering in pain from a hunter that was, you know, doing this because they enjoyed the sport. So that was pretty upsetting. And then at another time, we actually found a baby fawn just a couple feet away from our house with a little, a little hole in the side of his hip. And it looked like maybe a BB gun wound, maybe a gun wound, but there was a clear hole that, that looked like a bullet of some kind. And the, the fawn was a live, really little young deer. And we, uh, you know, did our best to pick him up and put him in the car and try to drive the, this little fawn to Operation Wildlife as quickly as we could. And unfortunately, by the time we got there, he had already died. So that was also really devastating. And this is what we as vegans in a rural Midwestern community had to deal with because of the people around us that enjoy the sport of hunting or enjoy eating killed animals. Rifle hunting, by contrast though, which still makes up about 75% of deer hunting in the United States, is much more accurate. But even so, uh, from the studies I found, about 7% of the time, animals are not killed outright. So with the number of deer that are shot and killed in the United States every year, that is hundreds of thousands of additional animals that are not being killed instantaneously as hunters claim and are likely suffering in pain and awareness with the trauma of realizing that they have been shot and are dying. So beyond just the actual act of murdering and killing another animal, there is also the fear and stress that the act of hunting and the chase and maybe them recognizing that there's humans around or in the case of hound and dog hunting, literally being chased for miles by aggressive animals. That brings out a lot of fear and stress in the animal way beyond a few seconds or a minute that they are actually shot and killed. And there are studies that have looked at the cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone that both humans and deer 
of course have. We are biologically similar in that way. And it found that deer had, when killed after a chase for a period of time, had extremely, extremely high cortisol levels that showed they were incredibly stressed out when they died. So this kind of defeats the purpose of, right, they just have one short quick death with these other methods of hunting. When they know they're being pursued or chased, it is incredibly terrifying and stressful to them. One other statistic I want to throw at you is the duck hunting rate, the, uh, the duck wounding and crippling rate, because ducks are probably, I think, one of the second or third most hunted animals in the United States. And these statistics are pretty disturbing, if you ask me. The conservative estimates for the duck hunting um, wounding rate is that 25% of birds that are shot are wounded and crippled uh, rather than being immediately killed by the hunter. And many, many of these birds end up suffering in pain for days or agony where another animal then captures them and eats them or they become infected. But that's 25%. And with the number of ducks and birds that are hunted and killed every year, that's at least an additional 5 million birds annually that are not immediately killed and rather just wounded and crippled and suffering in pain for who knows how long. And lastly, on this point, is even if, even if everything goes as perfectly as a hunter wants and the animal is killed immediately, and within 12 to 8 seconds they are dead, didn't see it coming, never had a chase, never had their fear and stress levels raised prior to being killed. Even then, there's still a harm because imagine how most of us would feel if our brother or sister or parent was murdered, but it was a quick painless murder and they'd had a good life, right? There would still be that pain and suffering on all of us because we have lost a family member and lost an individual and there are countless stories, I mean, you know, there's the classic Bambi, but countless stories of other animals realizing either finding a wounded animal, if, you know, they weren't one that had been shot immediately, or seeing, smelling that blood and scent, realizing that a family member of theirs is dead and gone, and animals absolutely express pain and sorrow and mourn. There are countless, countless, a truly large number of reports and accounts of animals crying over the bodies of family members or friends that they have become attached to. So even if the individual themselves that is shot suffers a quick painless death, what is it doing to their community, to their family members? Canadian geese, they mate for life. So if one of them is shot, the other one has been documented to mourn and cry and often not migrate with the others or not survive and actually die of a broken heart themselves because they are in so much grief from their partner being killed. So these are harms that hunters, and if you care about animals and love them, but think you can still hunt humanely or ethically, you're not taking these other factors into account. Number three, without hunting, deer in particular will overrun our environment. They will tear down trees, they will eat gardens, they'll be hit by cars, they'll just, you know, sort of get out of control, and so therefore we have to hunt them to keep things in balance. The reason deer would even be overrun, you know, become overpopulated in the first place is because we've killed off all of the wild natural predators that would have kept deer populations in check in the balance of nature normally. These are mountain lions, bobcats, coyotes, and the United States federal government, in particular the USDA and Fish and Game and Wildlife Services, actually kill millions of wild predators every single year. In 2018 alone, the government killed more than 2.6 million wild animals. But the second main point to make to this is, so yes, we are killing off wild predators that would have kept deer populations in check, but the other reason deer populations are so high is that we have actually managed them to maintain them as high for the purpose of hunting. And a really good example of this in the early 1900s, the late 1800s, deer populations had absolutely plummeted and humans had nearly hunted them to extinction in the United States. And hunters were very upset by this and people realized that they wanted to have deer to hunt. And so their populations were managed and regulated to make sure that they came back up. And in the last, you know, uh, 30 years or so, for many periods of time where their population was trying to be built up, 
hunters were only allowed to hunt bucks and not pregnant or any female does. And this was because if you kill a single male deer, it doesn't actually hurt the population that much because one male deer can impregnate many, many females, where if you kill a female, that is actively going to reduce the population more. And so in most states now, it is completely legal to hunt with limits, still, female deer. But at times, that was not the case because the populations were managed for the purpose of maintaining them so that people could hunt. So the other thing is, our human population continues to expand and expand and expand into the wildlife, into the wilderness, into the deer habitats. So we're expanding into their habitat and then getting upset that they are coming on to our property and damaging things we like, and then seem to think that provides justification to go out and kill them. When really, we are the ones that are encroaching on their territory and have been doing so for hundreds of years, and that doesn't make it ethical or moral for us to then say that they shouldn't be there. That is the same logic as, you know, colonialist invaders going into other countries and wiping out native populations. And most of us look at that today and view that as very um, wrong and horrible, that that's what many of our, our, that's what much of our past is built on. And so we shouldn't be using that same type of logic and justification, but with a different species. Number four, hunting licenses and the sales of them actually go to conservation efforts and saving other animals, whether it's endangered species or more deer and, and those that are hunted themselves. And so in the end, it's actually beneficial for animals because our conservation and ecology programs wouldn't function if they didn't sell hunting licenses. So I have a lot of thoughts on this one. First of all, even if this were true, and I'm gonna dispute it in just a second here, but even if it were true, the reason that I care about conservation and saving species is not for the species as a whole, but it's for the lives of the individuals within those species. The individuals are who I care about. The problem is most of modern conservation and modern ecology, even in talking about endangered species, the focus is on preserving the species and their existence for humans to enjoy or use or exploit. It's, it's we want that species to exist, we want biodiversity to exist for us not because we care about the individuals within that species. And that type of thinking can justify so many different harms and problems when we're looking at what's really best for animals. For example, this is what justifies a lot of zoos and caging animals, right? If we have the last two of a certain type of tiger on the planet, conservation would say, we need to bring them into captivity so that we can protect them and breed them so that they will continue to exist even if those two individuals are in a very tiny confinement and area that does not make them happy, that they would not rather be in, right? But from our human-centric, anthropocentric perspective of keeping a species alive for us, then it's justified. Whereas if we were to actually look at what do the individuals, those two last remaining tigers, for example, what do they want? They might not want to be forcefully bred or in captivity, and would rather live their lives and then maybe their species dies out. So I actually looked up the Department of Natural Resources in several states, Michigan in particular, because they had a lot of transparency to where their budget and funding goes, and they showed how they're actually spending the money that they get from hunting licenses. So take a look at this. And we can see that it's 11% out of the entire budget that even goes to wildlife Fisheries make up 7%, and that's really a fraction of the budget. So it's really hard to say that, that uh, hunting licenses are really protecting that many animals directly. In the fisheries section of the same website, you can see that it clearly states here that this funding is used for a variety of fish species are hatched and reared at the state's fisheries. These fish are annually stocked in designated public waters throughout the state to maintain or improve fish populations. So you may think your fishing is oh so natural, but this funding of hunting and fishing licenses is going to actually breeding fish for the purpose of making sure there's enough fish in the lakes and rivers so people can kill them and keep fishing. 
right? So again, not actually preventing cruelty, preventing exploitation, or preventing death, but actually creating a cycle of it. And that's what the hunting licenses are funding and doing. And so this really dispels the idea that hunting licenses and a few people hunting is actually funding and helping animals in the, the long run. The DNR is charged with the conservation of more than 400 species of animals, the birds and mammals that sustain Michigan's hunting heritage, as well as non-game wildlife, including threatened and endangered species. So just the way that we look at the framing of that really shows game and non-game. This is about the usefulness, the usefulness of these species to us as humans, not actually protecting and preserving their own habitat for them and the sake of it. So I would not be trusting these people with my money to think that they are actually somehow working to really protect animals. Number five, this is the argument that hunting actually harms fewer animals than a vegan diet does because as vegans we are eating mass-produced grain and mass-produced legumes and other vegetables that lead to tilling and the killing of small animals in fields, etc. Whereas by a hunter going out and hunting a single deer, they can provide protein to feed themselves or their family for many, many months. And then therefore one intentional killing of an animal actually kills fewer animals than us vegans eating tons of grain and legumes for protein are killing. There are so many falsities to this statement. Because first of all, when studies have actually looked at how many small animals are killed in farming and mass agriculture, that it's, uh, it's actually an incredibly low number. But even if that is the case, there's a difference between accidental deaths, which are going to happen in almost any kind of agriculture when we're trying to feed a planet of nearly 8 billion people. The, the accidental deaths are very different than intentionally choosing to take the life of another individual. And my favorite comparison is imagine if you're driving down the road and there's a dog sitting in the middle of the road. Do you, do you view it equally? If someone is, sees the dog, tries to swerve, the dog jumps in front of the way and you accidentally hit and kill that dog. Or if you're in the car with someone who's like, oh, I see this dog, let's go for them. And they hit the accelerator intentionally striking and killing that dog. I think most of us recognize that those are not at all ethically, moral, or comparable situations. And we view an accidental death as, of course, tragic, but it's not someone intentionally murdering and taking the life of another, which is just really hard to see how you can say that that's, that's caring for animals or you're being an animal lover by intentionally taking the life of an animal that wanted to live. But moreover, this is also a false argument because no hunter that I've ever met or spoken to is living 100% off of their hunted animal. Most of them are also continuing to eat factory farmed meat. They go out to restaurants with friends and family. They purchase at the store when their hunted meat runs out. And they're also still eating those mass produced grains, legumes, and vegetables to supplement their diet as well. And ultimately, if we have a choice and we can live a happy and healthy life without hurting others, why not do so? And that's what veganism is all about. And that's why hunting still doesn't make sense if you are truly an animal lover looking to do what is most ethical and of course, most sustainable. Because on that note, imagine if the entire world hunted. There is absolutely no way, and hunters themselves, including Joe Rogan on the Joe Rogan podcast, have admitted openly that Hunting could not work for the whole world. There's no way there's enough animals to do it, enough land, enough time, money, resources. It's not something that would be sustainable to feed the world population. So we shouldn't be moving in the direction of something that isn't ethical and sustainable for everyone to do. Where in contrast to that, veganism is absolutely sustainable for the whole world to do, would free up land, free up resources, kill few, you know, way fewer animals, and use way less land, produce way less greenhouse gases, and in general is simply a much more sustainable and ecologically efficient, and of course, non-violent way to live. So I hope you consider all of this. If you have questions, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on hunting. And make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, 
hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell button so that you'll get notifications next week when I release another video. See you later.